Hey folks, I've seen a lot of people confused about bluegrass tempo markings lately, and that's possibly made worse by the recent video on speed I did with Jake Eddy. I guess go watch that if you haven't yet. <laughs> but someone asked about bluegrass tempo markings in the Lessons with Marcel Discord, and I've seen a couple comments on YouTube. For instance, here's a comment from someone who's saying they're struggling to play faster than 200 and something BPMs. That might confuse you because 200 and something is an absurd tempo for most like non-cybernetically enhanced human beings. I can't even flat pick that fast. So what's going on here? Well, I'll tell you that one thing that's going on here is the new slick, stylish Tony Rice tarot card design available only at LessonsWithMarcel.com. I can tell you your future, and it involves sliding that torso into one of these bad boys. Thanks to myself for sponsoring this video. Back to talking about metronomes. Okay, let's start with the basics. Metronomes are just practice tools, and they can represent a bunch of different things, not just the tempo of a tune. All they do is divide up time. So the first thing you have to understand is setting up your metronome to a super fast BPM does not mean it's representing a super fast tempo of the song that you're performing. And setting your metronome to a slow, super slow BPM doesn't represent a super slow tempo. So how can that be? Well, without context, we don't know what the clicking of a metronome actually represents. Now I'm gonna do this first example without any you know, counting terms or music theory words because I don't wanna lose anyone. Don't worry, I'll, I'll get to that later on in the video. But for instance, I could take this metronome and I could set it to 100 BPMs and I could say that each click of the metronome represents a boom from a boom chuck pattern. That would sound like this. <laughs> By the way, this no hat look, it goes out to all of you old men that told me not to put my cap on backwards. Now you have to deal with what my hair does underneath the hat, which is this ridiculous pompadour thing. Anyway, I could also not change the settings on the metronome, and I could say that it represents the boom and the chuck of the rhythm player, and that would sound like this. Or maybe, let's say I could have the metronome represent the speed at which I'm playing the melody. So all of those melody notes are going to line up with a click. Once again, still without changing the settings on the metronome, what if I have to listen to two clicks for every one melody note? I mean, that's just absurd, but what would that sound like? Every single one of these examples has the metronome set to 100 BPMs, but the reference point is different. So are all of these examples played at 100 BPMs? No, I mean, the metronome is doing 100 BPMs, but the tempo marking for each one of these examples would be wildly different, right? You hear that it's getting slower and slower. So what gives? Is 100 BPMs a fast tempo or a slow tempo? All right, so this entire problem revolves around cutting up time into different lengths and then using it as a measuring stick. So for instance, we're cutting up time with the metronome. The metronome is our measuring stick. Now, assuming I'm playing the melody with eight notes, as in eight notes per measure, the first time I played for you, the metronome was clicking out half notes or twice per measure. <laughs> The second time, the metronome was representing quarter notes. So to continue playing eighth notes, I had to half my speed, right? Now the metronome is representing more things per beat. So if I want to line up with it and divide by eight, I have to slow down. The third time, the metronome was playing eighth notes. So for me to play my melody as eighth notes, I had to line up each melody note with the click, meaning I cut my speed in half yet again. Mm -hmm. 
The last time the metronome was representing 16th notes, so for me to play 8th notes, the metronome has to click twice for every one melody note that I played. All of these reference points are valid and could be useful subdivisions for your practice if you practice with a metronome, but only one of them represents the true BPM. So which one is it? Hopefully now you can see where all the confusion stems from. Since the metronome can represent different things and its BPM isn't tied with a one-to-one -one relationship with the tempo, sometimes folks come up with alternate numbers to represent the same tempo. For instance, this guy in the comments saying, hey, I can only play 200 BPMs, probably meant he could only play at 100 BPMs. Maybe we can make all of this go away by just asking one question. Where do you tap your foot? Listen to this recording of me jamming and tap your foot. I would wager that you're tapping your foot like this. If you're tapping your foot twice as fast, you're a maniac. Go to a doctor. Here's our answer. It's that simple. So the tempo was actually 100 BPMs. Thanks for watching. Actually, I guess there's more to talk about, but if that's the only answer you wanted, tap your foot with the bass player, and that is the tempo as far as bluegrass standards go. You can go home. If you're keeping score at home, though, and you're trying to understand all these relationships, you might have noticed something interesting. Uh, assuming we're playing lead as eighth notes still, and we're tapping our foot with the bass player, that means the click is only representing half notes and not quarter notes, as we'd normally use, you know, tempo markings to dictate. Normally, quarter note equals tempo marking, but we're using half notes. That's kind of strange. So do bluegrass musicians count differently than everyone else? Well, kind of, but not really. A normal rock and roll groove would have the metronome land on every quarter note. This feels like 4-4 to us. We tap our foot on every quarter note and it feels right. It sounds something like this. Now we could try to emulate that in bluegrass, right? What if instead of the bass player playing half notes, what if it was quarter notes? I'm not saying anything gets faster or slower. I'm saying our frame of reference just changes. So that means the rhythm guitar is eighth notes, the lead instruments are 16th notes, but this creates a world of problems that might not be obvious right away. So for one, it's very common for sections of songs like verses and choruses to be eight bars or 16 bars. But if we frame bluegrass in this way where the bass player is playing quarter notes, that means that all of our verses, choruses, A parts and B parts of fiddle tunes, they become just four measures each. And that's a little odd from a notation perspective. Normally we don't have uh, four measure sections of main sections of songs, right? Big parts of songs are normally a little longer than four measures. And that would also mean that all the lead parts need to be written in 16th notes. So that means every once in a while, we'd have the occasional 32nd note. And that's a little brutal for me. If I'm sight reading something and I'm also going to improvise over it and try to understand it very quickly, probably don't want to see a lot of 32nd notes. Hey, maybe that's just me. <laughs> but how do we fix the foot tapping thing? Because foot taps are supposed to be quarter notes. I hear you yelling out there. Well, most bluegrass music is felt in cut time, even if it's not particularly fast cut time does not equal fast. That's not what it's about. It's really how you perceive the written music, where you feel the pulse. So instead of feeling the pulse on every quarter note, if something's written in cut time, you're feeling it on every other quarter note, or in other words, every half note. So instead of tapping your foot on one, two, three, four, you're only tapping your foot on one and three. Here's the kind of annoying thing, and possibly another reason why lots of you have gotten confused, is that the cut time interpretation of bluegrass music is so ubiquitous that in the bluegrass world, a lot of times we don't even write the cut time symbol at the front of our music. It's just assumed that you understand how it works. In fact, the only time I remember having cut time written in some music that, you know, I've notated for teaching purposes was when I wrote an article for Premier Guitar. 
And of course their audience isn't accustomed to bluegrass convention. And so they put the cut time symbol at the beginning of every single example that I wrote for them, which I thought was very interesting. But in many large bluegrass publications, they will leave it out or mistakenly write things in 16th notes which kind of goes against the traditional way these tunes were written. Actually, here's some examples. So here's a uh, flat picking solos book by Scott Ford. This is a great book, lots of awesome contest arrangements in here. But you'll notice to circumvent this problem, they've chosen to write everything as 16th notes. So we can see a ton of 16th notes on the page and we have a 4-4 tempo marking at the beginning. This is not my favorite way to do things. Once again, I think the lengths of the sections get off or become too short. And I think it's a lot of ink on the page and it's a lot of more complicated rhythms to read. Here's another example. Um, this is called the flat picking the parking lot pickers, what's it called? The parking lot pickers songbook, right? And you can see that they've also written a 4-4 a four, four marking, but they've written in everything in eighth notes. There is no cut time marking. The assumption is just that it's in cut time. Hopefully you know that. If you read music well enough, hopefully you'll understand that. Here's yet another example, 100 essential Irish session tunes. And you can see in this book here, in Wind That Shakes the Barley, we have a 4-4 four, four marking and they've written a bunch of eighth notes. That tune definitely feels kind of like cut time to me. So it's interesting that they chose not to write the cut time symbol. They just wrote it in 4-4 with a bunch of eighth notes and assumed that you would know how the traditional music is played. Kind of a tough situation for newcomers to the genre, isn't it? <laughs> At least in my music on this channel, the assumption is cut time. I always write in eighth notes because it's easier to read and the section lengths are correct. I know it seems like there's almost a, a random system of denoting time signature and tempos to traditional music. I know that's confusing, but uh, the way that I just explained it is the truth. Listen to the bass player, tap your foot, that will give you a BPM that makes sense and is not absurd. <laughs> anyway, remember at my website, LessonsWithMarcel.com, you can sign up for private lessons. Um, we do like video chat lessons. We've also started doing workshops. Not sure, I think by the time this video comes out, the first workshop with Andy Hatfield will be over. So we'll have some new workshops on the website. Just go to the workshops page and you can see that. We also have our awesome merch like the, uh, the Tony Rice t-shirt. Definitely check that out. Anyway, I'll see you all later. You have a good one. Bye.